The name Natalie Bicard hit the headlines earlier this year, at least in Catholic media, when Pope Francis appointed her Undersecretary of the General Secretariat of the Synod of Bishops. She's not only the first woman ever to hold that position, she's also the first woman to have the right to vote. Sister Natalie is a member of the Ignatian Institute of the Xavier Missionary Sisters and was the first woman to serve as director of the National Service for Youth Evangelization and Vocations at the French Bishops' Conference. That's a lot of firsts, which is why we decided it was time to get to know Sister Natalie a little better and to hear firsthand her view on the Synod on Synodality. Sister Natalie, thank you for joining us here at Rome Reports. I, for one, am curious to know why you think Pope Francis wanted you in particular to fill this important role of undersecretary at the Synod. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it was a, a big surprise for, uh, for me, but I can't feel uh, myself appointed to this position without feeling I am linked to so many people and I am a kind of fruit of so many relationships and encounters. So I am very grateful for, you know, uh, all the, the people, the sisters uh, from all over the world I have met and who have uh, helped me to become <laughs> who I am. Uh, so I feel I am here uh, as a woman, as a sister, as a lay uh, woman connected to all the people of God. And I think that through me, that's what Pope Francis really wanted to do, to put uh, in the, into the synod, you know, the focus on all the baptized. So you feel you've received a lot of support in this role? Yes, yes, and I was very touched and moved when I was appointed to receive so many messages, you know, from, and not only from women and sisters, of course, religious sisters, but also many priests, bishops, uh, people I know and other people I don't know, even uh, economic leaders, political leaders, uh, who were so happy and share their joy to see, it's not me, but to see just a woman, uh, as I said, being called to that kind of uh, position to serve the church, to serve the uh, synodal church, because they feel it's for, uh, for them also. That's why I really feel I am here only <laughs> and through this connection uh, and, and with the support of so many people around the world who are dreaming for this uh, new style of church that is a church with everybody, including everybody. Not everyone knows that you have a master's degree in management and have worked as a marketing and advertising consultant. How have these management and communication skills served you in your present role in the Vatican? Well, I, I would say that I have learned a lot through my studies and my specialization in entrepreneurship and uh, two years of experience in uh, communication uh, and advertising because it's a part of, uh, I would say, pastoral work today. And uh, to serve the church in this world that is also very uh, influenced by communication, that's part of our world. We are in societies of communication. So it's a question of inculturation of language to speak with people, to reach them where they are, to, uh, to rely also <laughs> on uh, what I have learned uh, about communication and also about project management, because we deal with that. So, uh, the Synod is a big project. <laughs> it's not only, and it's very important to have the theological background and the, 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 this vision, but also it's about logistics, uh, teamwork, team management. And so it's important today that uh, those who are in ministry are not only trained in uh, theology, that's very important, but also with many uh, other skills. And uh, we are doing, each one is trying to answer the call of God through also who we are. <laughs> trying to communicate a synod on synodality is a challenge within a challenge. To use an advertising jargon, how does one market a concept that's really quite abstract. 
The difficulty with the synod, uh, you know, it's, it's, we can say, an, an abstract concept, but it's very easy to connect because uh, synod and church are synonymous. So it's about the church. Which kind of church we want to be today, or it's more about how God is uh, trying to call the church to be today, to be with the people, to reach the people, to be the church for this century to continue the same mission from the beginning, to share the joy of the gospel, because the mission of the church is to, uh, to walk with people, to help them to grow, to have a better life, to serve the world, to build a common uh, home for all. So this synod, you know, it, it's just a, it's a process, of course, a spiritual process, but it's a process about dreaming together the church for today and for tomorrow. It's about what we have to change to be uh, this joyful uh, church as an inclusive church, a relational church, a church with everybody in which all the people are protagonists to serve uh, the society and to be in relationship with all the people. It's a little bit to be a church uh, with this style of uh, relationship, fraternity, and that's it's an easy concept. You just used a loaded term there, the word change. Now, there are a lot of people watching this right now who won't necessarily like that word. They'd probably say something like, the church is fine as it is, leave my church alone. We don't need or want change. So how do you reach out to someone who feels that way? Yes, and we can understand because in all the organizations, when you speak about change or you feel you have to change, there are fears, resistance, because being in this uh, process of change is going to the unknown and it's, it's normal as human, <laughs> it's not easy. But if you look at the church from the beginning, the early church, the first communities, just after uh, Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, uh, and the church now, the church has changed a lot through the history because the church is always, you know, it's about real people like us living in a specific time, in specific context. In, it's different to be the church in Spain, in the United States, in uh, New uh, Guinea, in uh, China. Uh, so it's about being the church in a specific historic context. And if you look at the history of the church, you know it's always the same church. So it's not to change the nature of the church, it's the same from the beginning. But it is inculturated and lived and experienced always uh, in a human context, in a specific culture. So it's about how to be faithful to the nature of the church and the mission of the church from the beginning, but to be faithful to that in a changing world, and we can see, everybody can agree that our world is changing very fast, you know, and we are just living a pandemic. And so you can't be exactly the same <laughs> because the world is changing and the church is within the world, through the world, but has to find, to discern a good way to be faithful to, to our mission. In other interviews of you I've seen, you often reference the Second Vatican Council. Actually, when you were first appointed to the Synod, you described your appointment as the next phase in a historical context that began with the Second Vatican Council. Why is the Council so important to you? Yes, because uh, the way we live the church today and uh, our roadmap, we can say, for the church are, uh, is the event and the text uh, given and, and written by the Second Vatican Council. Uh, because at that time, there was also this idea from John XXIII uh, that the church has to do a kind of update you know, what we call aggiornamento, like a software, <laughs> you have to update regularly. And uh, the way we understand and, and we try to, to be the church today is specifically with this idea to be a synodal church. That means a, ch a church of communion, 
participation of all and uh, a church of missions uh, oriented towards the service of the others uh, is a fruit of the Council Vatican II. And the Synod of Bishops where I'm working has been created at the end of the Council by Paul uh, XVI. So I really feel, and not only me, you know, Pope Francis, many theologians, that the synod and synodality is a kind, some say, the best fruit of the council. And as a woman, I am a kind of heir of uh, the new focus given by the council to understand the church, not first through the hierarchy as a pyramid, but through the idea of all the people of God, uh, people working together as a community. And so that's why I already refer to the Council, and that is my, also my uh, background in ecclesiology. <laughs> uh, and it, it, it's a roadmap for the church today. And Pope Benedict says it's a GPS of the, for the church, uh, a compass. You just mentioned cultural diversity and reaching out to different countries. Right now, the Synod is in its diocesan phase. How's it going? Well, I, uh, I am very impressed, you know, on, on social media, uh, since a long time I have been <laughs> trying to, to, to follow. It's for me, it's a way to listen to the world and to the churches. And it's impressive to see such creativity, how many dioceses have uh, had their opening uh, liturgy for the Synod on October 17th. They are organizing synodal teams, different process, uh, website, and so all over the world there is a kind of uh, you know global trend of course with kind of diversity it's not the same everywhere but I, with all the people at the secretary of the synod we are truly impressed by this uh, everything that is happening now in many many dioceses when pope francis appointed you as under secretary your boss cardinal mario grec the secretary general of the synod said that with your appointment and i quote a door has been opened and we will see what other steps could be taken in the future what other steps do you think he had in mind well i don't know <laughs> you know the the synod is a learning process uh, step by step but we can already name some steps that we have been uh, living so now in the four commissions to prepare the synod you have some women lay people at the opening of the synod in the synod hall on october 9 with pope francis you know you had uh, an audience with a great diversity young people uh, religious sisters lay people from all over the world and of course cardinals and bishops but it was truly mixed the comment uh, the meditation on the gospel uh, at the prayer for the opening of the synod it was uh, two voices a uh, Jesuit priest from Africa and a laywoman theologian from Spain. So that's other gates that have been opened and so many people also told me, I was not aware of that, I was uh, at the table of presidents with uh, you know, Pope Francis, Cardinal Mario Greg, the other undersecretary and the general relator as a woman and they, then they say, you know, it was the first time there was a woman on this table. So it, it's just, you know, in fact, this change is mainly about changing our mindset and our imagination because too often we still have a pattern of the church as just the institution, the hierarchy, bishops, popes and priests. Their synodality is not about getting rid of uh, this important role, but it is about at looking first at the church from the reality, the living reality of the people, of the baptized, that is you and me and the diversity of the people all over the world. You yourself have suggested that another symbolic step might be if the Pope were to invite a woman to lead the spiritual retreat for the Vatican Curia one year. Is that something you would like to do? And, and what theme or gospel passage would you choose to reflect on? 
No, no, I won't like to do that. I think there are many other much skilled women to, to, to do that. But uh, I know and I have heard, uh, you know, for the first time, a, fr a French woman with a biblical scholar, Anne-Marie Pelletier, she has uh, written and preached the meditation of the... Uh, yeah, <laughs> the Chemin de Croix, sorry. Yes, the Way of the Cross. The Way of the Cross in Rome. But in, in France, for instance, we have the experience, not only me, but other women, to preach retreats to a diocese for the priests and the bishops. And so I really think uh, that it's, it's also so many women, you know, have uh, an experience. Uh, they are biblical scholars, now the new secretary of the biblical commission at the Vatican is a religious sister. So yes, it, it's, it's a, I think nothing uh, prevent from uh, calling a woman to, to give spiritual exercises. There are already experiences in local churches. Sister Natalie, one of the books you've written is entitled 100 Prayers to Weather the Storm. Do you believe the church is facing stormy weather at this moment in history? Yes, but it's also from the gospel, you know. <laughs> the, the gospel is also a story about uh, Jesus and the disciples in the boat uh, calling to go to the other side of the Lake of Galilee and facing storms. And um, today we can see, because we are in a world of crisis, the church is also facing crisis, especially uh, the crisis of sexual abuses and many sorts of abuses. So uh, we have to face that, and uh, Pope Benedict, Pope uh, Francis refer to this experience of the church being on, on a boat facing the storm. And I can say also that I have learned a lot as a sailor. Uh, I had a chance to, to learn to sail when I was very young and when I was a student. I did sailing races and I was trained to be a skipper. And my experience of the sea and of sailing helped me a lot <laughs> also to understand better uh, the gospel uh, and to, to, to to feel and to be in the church like to be all together in the same boat. And it's interesting because the first symbol to try to speak about the church and to express what was the church at the beginning of the early church, it was the boat. And today, uh, you know, to try to explain what is it, uh, this synod and synodality or this new way to be the church, it's to be a church on the move, a church on the way. It, it, in a certain uh, way, it's to uh, let a way to understand the church as a very fixed uh, church on stone, <laughs> stuck uh, in a part, to be the church on the sea, because our world is more and more uh, a moving world, you know, and, and we have to learn mobility, but at the same time, our roots are the Christ and the, the mystery of the Trinity. It gave us a very important rock. Yes, you were president of the association Life at Sea, Entry into Prayer, offering spiritual retreats on sailboats on which you were the skipper. Uh, it really is a wonderful metaphor, the sea and the boat, and the idea of you personally having to navigate your way through the Vatican waters of the Synod, taking up the challenge to duck in altum, putting out into the deep. Can be a scary business though, can't it? Do you personally ever feel afraid? Yes, of course. You know, the first time I came to Rome, it's interesting, I came to Rome in 2000 for the first time on a sailing boat with, this, uh, with a pilgrimage of uh, this association, Life uh, on the Sea. And, uh, and uh, I was skipper on a boat with five other boats and we came from France to Ostia uh, for the World Youth Day. And uh, we had a big problem uh, at the time with, uh, with our boat. And the first time when I was called to be a skipper, you have a responsibility. And from the beginning of the experience of the humanity, it's interesting, you know, uh, people have tried to go on the sea and to sail, <laughs> but it's always to take a risk. It's always risky to, to sell, so it's normal to be afraid. But then, you know, as a, a good seller, you have to learn where are the good currents 
and where are the countercurrents and to, to navigate. So that's the same in our life. You have the good spirit the, that push you to life, to serve, to peace, to joy, and you have countercurrents of fears, of anxieties, troubles, so you have to understand, <laughs> like on the sea, where are the good currents and the bad currents, and even if you have fears, the question is, are you led by your fears, or are you led by the call for life, for serving the others? And that's what I have learned also through um, uh, my experience of selling, and it helps me a lot through my life and also through this uh, position because I have to understand, <laughs> as you say, how to navigate in a good way. Sister Natalie, I have one last question for you, and I'd like you to direct your answer to the camera right over there. You've worked a lot with young people, so I'd like you to imagine a young person inside that camera right now, someone who's watching and is a bit confused maybe, a little skeptical about this hierarchical church and this synod on synodality that's taking place far away in the Vatican, an event that doesn't really have anything to do with his or her life and problems. Okay, the first thing I want to say, and I really want to thank so many young people, because what I can say today and who I am, I have learned a lot from the young people and they have transformed me. So I am uh, very uh, uh, endowed to young people. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is it, it is that during the Synod on Youth, you know, and this gathering, there were uh, 39 young people from all over the world among uh, 250 uh, bishops and cardinals and the young people have played a major role. And uh, with them, we have lived a wonderful experience of the church that we dream, that is a church, uh, you know, a relational church, a church of collaboration, of fraternity. The young people could uh, bring their voice, their vo and so many bishops during the synod, they were talking about concrete problems of the youth, that is, and I know many of you are facing that, the problem of unemployment, the difficulties with violence and conflicts in so many parts of the world, Words, the problem within the families, uh, loneliness in many parts of the world, question of uh, social media and digital world, because uh, we and you as uh, young people, you are immersed in this uh, digital world. So, the, you know, it's, it's not a, a church on the moon uh, di disconnected with young people. What we are doing now is partly the fruit of all the young people who have already brought their voices to the church, who are actors and protagonists to be the church and to change the church. And we really need your voice, your commitment, and your dreams, your desire, your creativity uh, to continue the road together. Uh, maybe you are believers or not. You have something uh, to say to the church because you have something to say to the world, this world now and the future world. Sister Natalie Bicar, it's been a privilege and a pleasure listening to you. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for joining us also. This is Rome Reports, and I'm Sean Patrick Lovett.